Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about the hip in Learn Your Body Thursdays. Hey guys, and welcome back to Learn Your Body Thursdays. My name's Dr. Chris Sovey, and this is the series where we work from head to toe, well, really toe to head. We started with the, the big toe and we're working our way all the way up the body, looking at every joint and helping you to learn how to assess these joints on a basic level so you're more empowered on how to deal with common problems associated with these joints. So today we've landed on the hip. This is going to be a two-part video. We're going to, uh, today we're going to look a little bit at a very basic understanding of anatomy and structure and the hip and why that's important to know that so you can prevent injury. And then in the second uh, video next week, we will get more into the common problems associated with the hip and what you can do to prevent them or improve them if you already have some of these problems. So let's go ahead and take a look at the hip itself. The hip joint is made of the uh, articulation of the femoral head and then also the deep socket is the acetabulum. The thing about the hip is in itself, because it, uh, the way it is designed, it has a lot of range of potential range of motion, freedom of motion. And with every joint that has more freedom of movement, meaning it can move, it can spin, it can turn, it can go this way, that way, instead of like your elbow that primarily only flexes and extends, right? Well, the elbow is a more stable joint for the most part. Even though this is a deep, very deep joint, it has a lot more areas where things can go wrong. Now, if you're paying attention in the videos before this, we talked about how the foot influences everything up to the hip. And a lot of people with foot problems end up with hip problems if they're not addressed. And it can actually go the other way too. Hip problems can create knee and foot problems. So we have this, this joint here deep in the socket and it's stabilized by several different ligaments and it's also suctioned in there and held in place uh, what's called the labrum. You, you may have, I've had a labral tear in my hip that has fortunately got better over time and through my own therapy and, and therapies with other people, but you have to have this integrity there. There's this cartilaginous layer that helps the, the ball to articulate smoothly in the hip. The hip is, is part of the pelvis, which it's a critical powerhouse for gait. You need to have good power in your glutes, both on the back and on the sides too, to stabilize you while you're walking while the leg is going behind you. And as I've mentioned in some of my other videos like Working Body Wednesdays, maintaining hip extension over time is very important. So the hip has different functions. It can flex, extend, it can also abduct, abduct, adduct, adduct, going towards the midline, and it can also rotate in and out. Now the thing about the hip is no two hips are the same in that people may be born with different orientations of their hip socket. So when that happens, you know, if there are what's called retroversion and antiversion, the, the best, most congruent position for your particular hip. So what this is, is some people will be more toed in because their hips are antiverted. Some people will be more retroverted in their hips where they're naturally more toed out. And it's not always best in rehab to try and counter this too much because you might actually be doing them a disservice at their hip. But you know, you, you think about infants and, and it is certainly discouraged to do things like W sitting because this can create problems in the development of the hip itself. It's important to understand that the hip is stabilized on all sides. We have muscles on the side here. We also have muscles around the back, the glutes, and also the glute uh, medius and some of the smaller hip rotators that are going to attach right onto the the neck region of the femur. We also have several different hip flexors, some that cross one joint, some that cross two joints. But one of the most important thing is to also realize that 
the hip is also uh, stabilized by the muscles of the pelvic floor in the base here, very important, and also some of the deep abdominals like your transverse abdominus. So if you've had hip trauma, it's important, or if you've had any problems with your hip, it's very important to find a therapist that spends a lot of time learning about some of these deep stabilizers. Because if you just go and you do explosive movements and we go right into big lunges and squats and stuff like that, you are creating a recipe for disaster. Believe me, I speak from experience. So it's important to work on those little stabilizers to keep good range of motion in the hip and also to work on the soft tissue if anything gets too bound up to where it's prohibiting your range of motion. Chronic hip pain can be very difficult to diagnose and treat unless you have somebody that's very well versed in some of the things that we've just talked about. In next week's session of this, I'm gonna go a little more into the individual common pathologies that you see, both things like osteoarthritis, um, of the hip, also instability, instability of the hip, uh, like a clinical instability, and then also things like labral tears, and what you can do to help reduce some of those problems and, and get on the right track for rehabbing them appropriately. So this has been another episode of Learn Your Body Thursdays, and we will continue with the hip next week, so be sure to check back then, and I look forward to seeing you guys either tomorrow on our, our gut series, TGIF, or next Thursday. Have a great day, guys, and be sure to uh, like, subscribe if you haven't already, and share it with a friend. Have a good one. Talk to you later.